Praise the Lord, young people. This is Brother Torrance coming to you um, as we prepare for the Saturday night Bible class. I um, ask that you do one thing before we get started and open up a prayer. Please grab your Bibles. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Most Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you again. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to see another day, Lord. We just want to thank you for the Bible class tonight, the group chat. As the young take for the young people, Lord, undertake for the things that they may be going through, undertake for their families, undertake as we prepare to get ready for another school year, Lord. We just ask that you undertake for the message that has come out, that is the blessing to everyone's heart, Lord. And I say undertake for the teachers that they put the put the word together, put the lesson together, and put it all together on video, Lord. Undertake for all aspects, Lord. In Jesus' name, praying good things. Amen. Praise the Lord, boys and girls. Welcome back to another Saturday night Bible class. We're so happy to have you back here with us again. And we're excited to bring forth God's word to you. So you know the drill before we begin. Let's make sure that you have prepared your mind and your heart to receive God's word. My name is Sister Liz. I will be going over the books of the Bible, followed by Sister Seacher with the memory verse. And then we're going to have Brother Coven with another lesson on the Ten Commandments. So let's get ready. Let's start with reciting the Old Testament books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, then Ezekiel, and then Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, that's Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. All right, guys, today's book of the Bible Review is Haggai, and that is the 37th book in the Old Testament under the division of the Minor Prophets. It was written by author Prophet Haggai and written around the time frame of 526 BC. Now, the book of Haggai is very well known because it is one of the very few prophets to whom the people of Israel actually listen to. And if you recall from all the other prophet review, other other Bible reviews, every prophet that gave a message wasn't very well listened to. Let's look at the famous verse. He it comes from one verses five through six, and I and I am going to read it from the King James Version, and it reads, "Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts: Consider your ways; ye have sown much and bring in little; ye eat." But ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe the, you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put in a bag with holes. Now let's look at the important points in the book. Haggai likely wrote this from Jerusalem when many people had returned from the Babylonian exile. So this is 70 years later. Those who had returned in hope 15 years earlier were now facing dire struggles. So now they're back and they can't, they're, they're not focused, they have no motivation, and they've lost faith. They lacked clothing, food, and had been mocked by other nations brutally about rebuilding their temple. The mocking had drained them of faith, so they had quit. Haggai's messages are simple and straightforward. God tells the people through Haggai to rebuild the temple first. It would help keep them from falling back into errors that had caused the great exile to begin with. So the purpose of Haggai's message was to refocus the people of Israel. They had gotten away from building God's temple and they started focusing on themselves, building up their houses, making sure their gardens were in order. They had livestock during this 15 year period, which is why Haggai for first, uh, chapter 1, verse 5 and 6 tells us that God had ceased some of those blessings. So Haggai's message was, again, simple and straightforward. Turn your eyes back on God. Have faith in Him. Don't be dismayed. God is with you. Praise the Lord, young people. I'm Sister Citra, and tonight I'll be bringing you the memory verse portion of our lesson. 
Tonight's memory verse will be coming from the Old Testament and it'll be coming from the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk, if you're wondering where that's found, that can be found after Nahum in the Old Testament. The memory verse for tonight is going to be Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20a. I'm going to go ahead and read it from God's word. Hopefully you do have your Bibles. All right, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20 and that reads, but the Lord is in his holy temple. All right. Amen. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to go ahead and review it together again. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20 a. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Again, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20 a. But the Lord is in his holy temple. All right. Again, it's Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20 a. But the Lord is in his holy temple. All right. Amen. I hope that you all were able to follow along with that. Hopefully you were able to find uh, it in God's word. Remember Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 28 is the address to the verse. And that way you can go uh, to that address and locate that verse and read it. So, all right, prepare your hearts and mind for Brother Colvian as he brings to you the lesson for tonight. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everyone, ALBM family, boys and girls. And um, this is Brother Covian coming to you with the next lesson in our series here. We're still moving along in our stories with Moses, and we are up to God's special house. Um, it's been built, which was our last lesson, building God's house. The house has been built. It's God's special house. He gave the instructions of what was to be done, and now it's up. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the most holy and precious name of Jesus. Lord, I come to you just giving you thanks for who you are, giving you praise today for saving me, giving you praise today for laying it upon me to study and learn more about your word. Dear Heavenly Father, as I share what you have given me, I do ask that I be hidden behind the cross as this is not about me. This is about sharing what you've given me to share and me being a vessel that you can use to share your word. So I just thank you, Lord Jesus, for the things that you have taught. I say I'm going to take for each and every listener that they will have wisdom and understanding of your word today in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, God's special house. This story comes from the book of Leviticus chapter 16. And then we go over to Hebrews chapter 9. And it's kind of a what was happening then to the way it is today story. The way things were done in the Old Testament and the way God set it up to the way it became after Jesus Christ. I want you to put that in your mind as we kind of go through this lesson. Um, the aim is to teach that God wants us to worship him every day. That is the key. That is what's behind the building of God's special house is a place of worship, a time of worship, but then the understanding that God wants us to worship him on a daily basis. So after the, uh, the house has been built, um, Moses is very happy because this is what happened. The, the Hebrew people are happy and they go through a bunch of conversations talking about things that were done, what was there, the colors, the wood that was used. Because remember, God gave them the inspiration and the understanding of how he wanted things to be set up. And the details that went into it all point back to the fact that God wants us to worship him. He gave them a place where they could go and comfortably worship God and show him love and thanks and gratitude. Remember, the children of Israel have been through so many different things, right? And what always amazes me about this area and studying it and reading it is how something would happen or they would get upset, they'd get worried, and they'd fall right back away from not sticking with the fact that you know what God is going to deliver. Don't we do that today? We still do that. But they would quickly lose sight. God delivers them out of the hand of Pharaoh. Then it looks like the food's running out and they start worrying, they start fearing, and then boom, God delivers again. So one of the most important things of worship that we can realize is that if we stick with worship, if we stick with him every day, we'll worry so much less and we'll lose our faith in God so much less. Now, um, Rachel, uh, it's a lot of the story from our from our book shows us how Rachel loved to talk to 
um, excuse me, how uh, the mother here loved to talk to Rachel and Joel about the things that were uh, to be and the things that God, the way God set up the house and why things were where they were, who could go here, who could go there. So I want to kind of just, because I don't have a lot of time, just point to the power and the reason why we should be excited about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So once a year, the priest or the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, which was part of the special house that was built, God's special house that was built, once a year to offer a sacrifice for the sins of the people. Every year, a sacrifice for the sins of the people. Stay with me now because I'm going somewhere with this. Every single year, they had to go in and make a sacrifice for the sins of the people. The Word of God, if you read through Leviticus uh, uh, chapter uh, 16, will tell you about the things that they that they did in the sacrificing that they made that had to be made for the people. And they would go in on a yearly basis and offer um, these sacrifices to the Lord. So everything that the people would do over a year, anything, they had to go in there to cover this sin. Well, where are we today? Hebrews chapter 9 goes over and it talks about the same stuff, the things that were done in creating that house. And then it talks about Jesus Christ. And one of the things that it says there is the mediator of the New Testament, a more perfect tabernacle, the blood of the Testament. And what we understand here is that Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. Now, nobody has to go and make a burnt offering or a sacrifice to pay for the sins that we would commit. Because when Jesus Christ came onto the scene, what happened? He made the one-time payment for our sins and he covered us under that payment. Remember, he was beaten and bruised. He died in our place. So again, the beauty that you see that the story uh, being then told again in Hebrews chapter 9 talks about the fact that Jesus Christ stepped in and he took the punishment for us, the one-time payment. So the sacrifices are no longer necessary because of Jesus Christ. If this doesn't make us fall in love with Jesus, I have no idea what will because Jesus paid it all. We have songs, we got hymns, we got so many things that tell us about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. One of the things that I've always said, if people think that the Bible is just a rule book, if you stop there and if they stay away from it just because they don't want to hear what the rules are, you are missing out, big time missing out on what God is saying to us about how we need to live and why we need to live. Yes, there are rules. Those rules are in place for our protection. And as long as we obey those rules, we find ourselves protected from a lot of the things and problems that could come our way if we follow the rules. Now, we don't follow the rules always. We mess up. We make mistakes and we don't follow the rules. Thankful that Jesus Christ is there. He made the payment for those sins and those mistakes that we would make. So that should make us fall in love with God. That should make us love God even more because he cared about us so much and he knew that we would fail. Let me say that again. He knew that we would fail. He knew us because he created us. He knew that we would fail and he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross to pay for our sins. And this area of scripture just opened that up so much to me and I hope what I have explained opens it up a little bit to you that you understand Jesus Christ. We have got to accept Jesus Christ because he already paid for our sins. There's no more yearly sacrifices that need to be made. There's no more annual celebrations that have to be done. All you have to do now is say yes to Jesus. Your sins will be forgiven. And not only will your sins be forgiven, Jesus Christ will change your life. He'll change your thinking. He'll change the way that you live. So again, um, to teach that God wants us to worship him every day, that's what this area of scripture is about, teaching us that he wants us to worship him. That's why that special house was created. So in other words, we need to be there as well. 
We need to be in his presence. We need to spend our time in God's house so he can talk to us, so he can minister to us. We have our own homes, but the picture that I put at the beginning of the message is a picture of God's house above our house. God's house has to be above our house because our house won't function without God's house. And that's every aspect of our lives, not just in a house sense, but in every aspect of our lives, we got to put God over anything else. In the morning, God wants us to worship him every day, right? So in the morning, who's getting up every morning and spending their time in their devotions? I know I have some days where I fail, but it is my goal and my desire in my heart to get up every morning and spend time with God before I walk out of this door. Before I leave this house, I've got to spend time with my Heavenly Father. And that's our daily time worshiping God. And we have to get into worshiping the Lord on a daily basis so that he knows Excuse me, so that we know that he is in, in control of our lives. He knows what we're going to do, and he knows what we've done. He knows what mistakes we've made, the, the, the mistakes that we're going to make. But you know what? He sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sin. They've been paid for. We've got the victory if we reach out to Jesus. So we got to understand the purpose of that special house that God created is so that we can worship him, and he also wants us to worship him daily. We get together once a week on Sundays, or we get together twice a week, maybe on Wednesdays, whatever the days are, but still at the same time, what we've got to get is the fact that we need to worship God daily and understand that Jesus Christ came, and he is the propitiation. He made the payment to cover our sins, and we should get a huge amen for that. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just want to give thanks to you for your word today. Lord, I hope I did not confuse any, anyone, but what you gave me to study and understand about Jesus Christ today, Lord Jesus, just really warmed my heart. And I'm just so thankful for that, dear Heavenly Father. Help us to draw ever closer to you. Help us to understand the, necessary, uh, the necessity of daily time with you and your word, dear Heavenly Father. And we're just going to be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, as we continue, um, I want to talk about something very, very important. Um, we have so much going on in our world right now, and uh, we just uh, had a message of uh, people who are listening to what Jesus has to say, who are sitting at his feet, um, you know, uh, his disciples, his children, people who know him and people who are getting to know him and hopefully saying yes to Jesus Christ. Um, but what if you haven't said yes to Jesus Christ yet? How do you establish a personal relationship with him? How do you know that when you leave this earth that you're going to go to heaven? Um, there's so many people afraid right now because of this pandemic that we have going on. Um, school has been canceled. Businesses are closed. People are stuck in their houses and uh, everybody's panicking. And uh, some, some people are panicking, not everybody, but some people are panicking because they're like, what's going on? You know, like, what do I do next? And they're afraid. But for the believer, um, these should be exciting times for us because I believe that God has once again slowed everything down so that we can all get our focus back on him. And this is also an opportunity for us to tell people about Jesus and how they can get to know him. So we'll talk about the way to heaven. Okay. Why did God give his son? It's because he loved the world so much. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus, be, Jesus came to the world. The Word became flesh. He lived. He died. And he did that for us so that we could be saved. That's why he gave his Son. He loved us so much. He didn't want us to die and go to hell. He wanted us to be with him. So then you may ask, well, well why do I need Jesus? What is my need for Jesus? Why do I need him? We need Jesus because we have sinned. I have sinned. Sometimes we sin by getting into fights. So many other things that we do. We disobey our parents. Um, um, our sin brings sadness. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, uh, Romans uh, 3.23 says. That's why we need Jesus, because we have sinned. Sin separates us from the love of God. There is a penalty for sin. If we don't accept Jesus, there's a penalty for sin. Sin must be punished. Read this line right here. Sin must be punished. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's found in Revelations 20, 15. And it says again, for the wages of sin is death. 
but, and thank God for this word, but right here, B-U-T, but <laughs> the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 6, 23 is where that scripture is found. Okay. So what did Jesus do for you? What did Jesus do for me? He was punished in my place. He was punished in your place. Okay. He is not still dead. He is alive and he's in heaven. He took the punishment for our sins. First Corinthians 15, three to four, pardoned for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay. So what do I need to do? How do I accept this gift? How do I become a member of God's family? How does my name get written in the Lamb's book of life? How do I know that when he returns, I will be with him? Okay. For again, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He gives us a gift. The gift of God is to receive Jesus Christ, to accept salvation from Jesus Christ. That is how we establish it. That's how, that is how we establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That is found in John chapter 1, verse 12. Okay? So we must receive God's gift. Do you want to receive God's gift today? Do you want to receive his gift? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, says Romans 10, 13. So there's a prayer that we need to pray if we want to be in the family of God. It's a very simple prayer that if we pray it and we mean it, we immediately be born into the family of God. And that prayer reads, and if you want to just pray it right now, you can bow your head, close your eyes right where you are, and just say this prayer right along with me. You can say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins and rose from the dead. Please come into my heart today. Come into my heart and life and save me. Help me to live for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, what you need to do now is uh, reach out to... You have just been born into the family of God, first of all. And now what you need to do is reach out to um, you know, your, your spiritual leaders here at the Abundant Life Bible Mission, uh, the leadership in this group. Um, you, know, you can reach out now and we'll tell you how to become a disciple, how to build that relationship with Jesus Christ and continue to grow in his faith and grow in his love. And next thing you know, you'll be telling your friends about Jesus. You'll be telling other people how they can be saved and how they can have a relationship with God. And that is the most important thing, especially during these times right now. We don't know when the Lord is going to return, but a lot of biblical prophecy is being fulfilled right now with everything that's going on. It is being fulfilled and the Lord is coming back soon to take us where? To take us to heaven. So what you just learned was how to get there. And the way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for again for this time. Thank you for this class. Thank you for this message. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to still um, get online and share with the children. We ask that you to keep them engaged, keep them focused, help them to build upon what you've started teaching them, help them to draw closer and closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen.